Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. We will begin with our prayer to be followed by the national anthem. May we request everyone to put yourselves in the presence of our Almighty God. Let us put ourselves in the presence of God. God Almighty, thank you for bringing us together to celebrate Cebuano culture and heritage through the sharing of our stories. We need this in this time of uncertainty, O oh God, to remind us of our identity as a people, unique and blessed and proud. This reminder must inspire us that whatever challenges we face, whether unseen, alien, and treacherous, can always be overcome if we are united in working for the present and the future, and for the heritage of our children and community. We pray for our present-day heroes who are fighting against the virus, as well as other threats that besiege us today. For our own people struggling to overcome these threats, and for those who have died, fallen, but never forgotten. Dearest God, heal our land. Amen. Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Ayang magiliw, pero sa sinahanan, alam ng puso, sa titik mo'y buhay. Upang pinilitang, kuya ka ng magiging, sa mantutupin, itapasisipin, sa nagatang. Ayong hapon mga subuanon. Welcome to Gabi sa Kabilin 2021 online activities. This is an engaging space to appreciate and experience Cebu's culture and heritage. To formally start our webinar this afternoon, we would like to introduce the Gabi sa Kabilin event director and the head for content of the Rafi Culture and Heritage Unit, Miss Heidi Palapar. Mayong hapon ka natong tanan. I hope everyone is uh, 
safe and fine in this uh, very good afternoon. It's a very good afternoon because we are here again for another Gabi Isa Kabilin webinar. And this time, as part of our offering for the very, um, very coming very soon, actually, the 500 years of Christianity, arrival of Christianity and um, the arrival of Magellan and the ver victory of the Battle of Mactano. Um, we hope that uh, this, is, this would be a very uh, fruitful and productive um, afternoon for each one. As everyone knows, Gabi Sakabilin is spearheaded by the Ramona Boitis Foundation Incorporated, uh, aimed at promoting local culture, uh, local culture or Cebuano culture and heritage by encouraging Cebuanos to visit local museums and heritage sites. But since we cannot all come to the museums and crowd our museums at one time, we are bringing the museums to you, albeit virtually this year. Uh, this year is the 15th run, and though there is still the pandemic and most of us are still in quarantine, we continue to celebrate our local culture and heritage online. All the more this year since this is it. What we have been preparing for the last four years since 2018, the 500th anniversary celebration of the arrival of Magellan, birth of Christianity, and the victory at the Battle of Mactan. The partner museums and sites for this year, which is I think about 16, no, were brought in to host online activities from January I, I, I know that you were here with us in our webinar last January together with Father Rick Reyes of the Basilica uh, del Santo Nino Museum. And he was talking about the uh, journey of the Santo Nino. And that was a very interesting talk because we also clarified a lot of things uh, at that time. And uh, we also learned a lot of things that we thought, you know, this, this was how they, it was, but actually... It was not so. I found that uh, webinar very interesting. So we'd like to thank again one our partner, uh, Basilica Menore de Santo Nino Museum and Father Rick Reyes for that uh, webinar in January. So the webinars, like I said, uh, will be from January to December. Sorry, not the, just the webinars, but online activities and part of that are the webinars. But the webinars we have in January to March focuses on the theme of the quincentennial celebration. And because this is the year, we have also organized the GSK One Night Only, or the GSK Ono on April 16. And this special event gathers all the presentations of each of the partner museums and sites, highlighting on the theme. And what is unique about this, uh, um, event is that this can only be seen for one night, like its name, one night only. So April 16, please watch out for that. Of course, uh, this comes with a price, but the price is only 80 pesos. So if you want to join us and celebrate your local culture and heritage, it's a small price to pay in order to celebrate the Cebuano, an identity with a history and culture worth sharing to the world. Please check our website, facebook.com slash Gabi Isa Kabilin Cebu, to know how to buy a ticket. We have already uh, started our ticket selling, and I hope uh, all of us will buy, not just uh, you tell your friends, please, you tell your family members um, to come buy the ticket so that we can all celebrate as one. Okay, But for now... I think uh, we have to proceed to our webinar because I know you want to already begin. But before that, by the way, let me remind you that there's a Q&A, a question and answer portion towards the end. So if you want to join us, you have uh, things you want clarified to our speaker or, or um, things that you want to also comment or you want to... Uh, you have this a certain knowledge and now uh, our speaker is debunking it. Please just type your comments, your questions to uh, the chat, the comment section no, of the uh, of our FB page of the Gabi Isa Kabilin and we will try to accommodate all of them. 
Also, please watch out for our trivia. As usual, we have a trivia. Um, about five questions, I believe, and win prizes. So if you're the first one to answer our trivia, you get to have uh, a prize for that. Also, we would like to ask those who want to get an e-certificate at the end of the seminar, or se sorry, webinar, please don't forget to register online. The registration uh, is still open. Um, and then you have to also, after the, the webinar, uh, there is that evaluation a form that we would like to ask to request you to also fill out. Send that evaluation and then you will be able to get your e-certificate. We'll send your e-certificate to you. Okay? And uh, now, our speaker this afternoon is uh, Suki in the GSK webinars. It's a, he's a Suki because actually it's a testament of his expertise because we only get the best for our G GSK online activities. Our speakers is Jobers or more formally Jose, Dr. Her Jose Eliazar R. Bersales, who is the director of the University of San Carlos Museum, the manager of the University of San Carlos Press, and the head of the USC Communications Office. So many responsibilities. He's also a full professor at the USC Department of Anthropology, Sociology, and History. He holds a PhD in anthropology with an archaeology dissertation from the University of San, San Carlos on a sandwich program with the New Mexico State University in Las Cruces, New Mexico, USA. It was at NMSU that Jober trained in the archaeology of Central American Maya in Belize and Guatemala. Jobers was also German academic exchange scholar at the University of Bielefeld, I hope I pronounce it correctly, from 1997 to 1999, and an Asia Research Institute ASEAN graduate scholar at the National University of Singapore in 2006. He also trained in GIS in archaeology at the Larenstein University of Professional Education in the Netherlands in 2007 under Dutch MHO grant. Dr. Bersales was once a national president of UGAP, the Anthropological Association of the Philippines. Currently, he heads the National Committee on Museums of the National Commission for Culture and the Arts, or NCCA, and is the Cebu Provincial Consultant for Museum and Heritage Affairs. He's also a member of the Cebu Archdiocese and Commission for Culture and the Arts and the Cebu City Cultural and Historical Affairs Commission. Joe Burs has written or co-authored a number of heritage books, including Salapi, the new numismatic heritage of the Philippines, which won an Anvil Platinum and Anvil Gold in the 50th Anvil Awards 2014, as well as The War in Cebu, which is a finalist in the 2016 National Book Awards. He is currently writing a book on the archaeology of Cebu for the National Quincentennial Committee. Claro ka ayo no, the the, our speaker is, like I said, one of the best in his field. With no further ado, please welcome Dr. Jose Eliazar or Jobers R. Bersales. Hi, Sir Jobers. May hapon. May hapon. Hi. Magwala-wala ang atong signal. Mulagi, Sir. Gikulbaan ko. But sige lang, Sir. Kaya lagi ni. Balik naman na. <laughs> okay. Anyway, Sir. if I disappear from the signal, mo balik na after mga one to two minutes. Uh, <laughs> okay, this is the reality. This is the reality okay. of online. But anyway, Sir, but ha, I have my PowerPoint presentation. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But, but but Sir Ha, kanang, um, I know that even if I know you just came out from isolation, taas uh, <laughs> taas kay ito imuhang quarantine but despite that yeah. uh, sa itong mga audiences karon Sir Jobers very busy left and right ang invitation sa iyang webinars and I know he's writing also a book and he, I know he's doing his responsibilities from, from the for the USC no for you the University of San Carlos so Sir Jobers thank yeah. you kaayo sa pagdawat sa among imbitasyon di you ka mo balibad pa sa GS cake and pasalamatun kaayo mi uh, thank you for also being there, sa GSK, and especially for uh, mga i-consult na mo ng mga historical ng aspects. So, uh, you, Sir Jobers, I'll see you later for the Q&A. Thank yeah. you, Sir. <coughs> thank you, Kaayo Heidi. Thank you, sir, sa GSK. We support the GSK. Kaya unique di sa Tibo, Pilipinas, no? Sa Tibo, Pan. So, 
Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Ako power presentation is uh, being prepared, I think. Yeah. My talk today will be about the Magellanic Voyage Part 2. Ako sa picturean, ha? <clears throat> From Cebu to Maluko. But, and so the outline, next slide, is um, uh, Palihoko Raves, the next slide. Oh, well, before I proceed, I'd like to thank the National Quincentennial Committee, which helped uh, provide uh, some of the important dates that I'll talk about. And of course, Ms. Heidi Palapar, the head of the Cultural Heritage Pro uh, Program of uh, of uh, Ramon Aboitis Foundation and of the Gabi Isa Kabilim team. Uh, and also my home base, USC Museum and, and the Museo Subo. So let's proceed with the outline. <clears throat> I'll talk about the departure from Cebu and then from Palawan to Brunei, from Brunei back to the Philippines, Sulu, and then Mindanao, and then from Mindanao to Maluku, uh, because I will not talk about from Maluku to to Guam and then back to the to, to Spain. Um, then I'll have concluding remarks. Um, okay. Now before yeah. Okay. Before I talk about the departure uh, to uh, from Cebu, let us refresh because this is part two of my talk. But part two one was in December when I traced the the Magellanic route, no, um, as it went from from Spain to the Philippines. So they rounded the Cape of Good Hope and uh, eventually saw Guam. And then on 16 March 1521, somewhere in Giwan, uh, from Guam, somewhere in Giwan, in the Giwan Peninsula, uh, in the, the, the remaining three ships, anchor of Suluan Island, uh, which is now part of Eastern Samar. The following day, they land in Homonhon Island, which was an, I think it was a, uh, inhabited, no. It's now under Giwan, and uh, they brought the sick out of the ships. Kay pila kasi mana, uh, they were looking for food from Guam, and they were starved. They were starving. They were dehydrated, so they found natural springs uh, in Homonhon. A day after that, the uh, people of Suluan uh, discovered uh, the the fleet that the expedition in Homonhon. And the local chief of Suluan uh, provides food. So in Anataka, ang atong ang mga taga late, no? uh, they offered taga Samar, they, they offered food to the starving and uh, dehydrated members of the expedition. Um, and then uh, mga four days later, nimbalik na sad ang mga taga Suluan dito sa Homonhon, bakao na sad upa inom sa mga, so, mga members sa. Uh, fleet ni Magellan. And then about three days later, the expedition sails out of Homonhon, goes to the Hinonangan, close to the waters of Hinonangan, southern Leyte, uh, and also uh, in Gibusong Island, which is now part of Loreto of Dinagat Islands. So they, they meander, they travel through that area and then um, on 27 March 1521, they noticed uh, St. Elmo's fire, St. Elmo, which I'll explain later, it always appears uh, on boats on the masts of ships, which is a sign of, 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 of good luck among mariners when you see a St. Elmo or St. Elmo. No? <clears throat> they, in an area that they identified eventually as Mazawa now called Limasawa Southern in Southern Leyte. A day later in, in Limasawa, Kulambo, the Raja of Butuan, welcomes uh, the expedition. Uh, he speaks a little Malay, Malay, the, the language of, of uh, Enrique, the interpreter of Magellan. And so they talk, they talk for a while. And then uh, the, on the 29th of March, uh, the Raja of Butuan meets uh, Magellan and Colombo and Magellan uh, enter into a, 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 a blood compact. A day later, I mean two days later, March 31, is the Easter Sunday. This is the first Easter Sunday Mass in the Philippines. No? It's held in, uh, in Limasawa. Now about uh, 31, April 1, 2, 3, 4, about four days later, 
they ask, well, they, after the mass, they ask, where can we find provisions for food and where we can trade? We can buy spices, we can buy uh, porcelain, all those things that you use. And uh, Colombo said, you go to Butuan, Caraga, or you go to Cebu. But I would prefer that you go to Cebu because it's the center of trade in, in this area. So in, in, in the Visayas and in, in northern Mindanao, the way Cebu is still right now you know, in the central areas of uh, central eastern and central eastern Visayas and uh, northern Mindanao. Uh, so uh, for some strange reason, Sila April 4, it will take them about three days to arrive in Cebu. Why? Because nagmeander ang Colombo guiding them. I will talk, tell the Colombo brought some guides for them. I think Colombo instructed the guides na hinahinaya sa ang travel, na slow down the travel. So they, they move through bye bye and then cross to the Camotes Islands. No, They identify uh, Pigapeta then identifies around April 6 or April April 5 there at bye bye and they stay overnight in um in Himo Kilan Hindang Leyte no where they for the first time they eat they eat mga kabog uh so bats nga daggo flying squirrel or so mega bat daggo kaayo and, and um but while waiting for Colombo to arrive, Colombo dili dalis no naginahinay si Colombo. My suspicion is he's he info, sends informants to humabon nga pagandam diha because we are not sure if buutan ni mga tawhana or not, <clears throat> or they get ready for trading because these are important people na dag mga kanyon o whatever no. Basta they meander naginahinay ni sila. They cross through uh, Ponson uh, in 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 Pilar no. Kay, di ba? Oo. Ormok, bye-bye. Makita man ang pilar. In fact, karon o taga-pilar, kaanto ka mo shopping sa Ormok. So it's very near. So they cross to pilar and then they go to through Poro and San Francisco. That's why the claim of the people of Mactan, uh, San Esperanza, San Francisco, that the Battle of Mactan happened. Uh, it's impossible because Picafeta already identified these islands. He knew... <clears throat> He knew these islands. He names them. So it's impossible. He makes the mistake of misidentifying uh, 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 Tikobon, which he mentions. He misidentifies the Battle of Mactan as happening not in Mactan but in another place, no, in 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 Camotes. He would have said Tikobon. No? So there's no mistaking there. And then, uh, so April four, they leave <clears throat> Limasawa. They arrive April seven. In Cebu, around uh, noon time, I think they fire cannons. They meet Humabon, and Humabon says, "Before we, before I will sell you anything, before we trade, sabot sa you give me tribute, because everybody here gives tribute." No, Humabon as a Mohammedan interpreter, Muslim nga interpreter, talks with Enrique nga. Bisa pagsikat kay na imong your <coughs> your boss in the in Spain is sikat and all that blah blah blah. I don't know man sang trade yun Chinese. Thai, bagurang nibiya ang usa ka Thai nga nga boat and then they send tribute them hatag og mga gifts to enter into trading relations so you should do that so Magellan I think considered and uh, and uh, in exchange ingon siya nga pwede ba ko maglubong sa among duha ka patay do nami we have two people who are who are dead no uh, who who died who passed away some probably from Concerning common disease, mariners rickets yah. I don't know it. Scurvy, lack of ah, kanang lemon, kalaman si vitamin C ang tambal na. But when you're floating for months, where where can you find vitamin C? So it's a common disease, no? Maglatak imong gums, ma. Masta it's it's a debilitating disease. So they buried. I think they buried on that spot where you find the Magellan's cross. Okay, they put a cross manware on the spot, and then late, days later they prepared a platform for uh, to 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 hear mass, no? to hear mass every day. Uh, so around uh, April nine, no, so good na nag -edu <coughs> excuse me, so good na nag educate si Magellan kang humabuna. You should become Christian. We we will be allies. We will protect you. We will. Uh, 
yeah, we will be allies. You convert to Christianity, all your enemies, we will subdue them or we will convert them and they will they will recognize you as the supreme authority. Because also, if you're humabo now, okay. Okay, now another day, sinful tayo, magpabunyag na ka. Yeah, ikaw na yung mas supreme, there is kapupudan no, around the islands of the Visayas. So, he agreed. No? So even, even theologians agreed that the conversion was not really in the sense, true sense of a Catholic conversion. It was more of an alliance. No? It's, it's getting something out of it. Yeah, si Impura Gun. Yeah, yeah, you know, kita mga Bisaya, Cebuanos, Filipinos, ganahan kita pump and ceremony and the mass had a ceremony by Latin mass. So, na-impress gito si Humabon. So, eventually, you had the first baptism in April, on April 14. And then, around, uh, and then they, he meets nine chiefs or ten chiefs, si Humabon introduced to the allies of of uh, say, say Magellan is introduced to the allies of Humabon, but there is one in Mactan, si Sula, who sends his son on April 26, around that time, that he, uh, only with two goats, because according to him, there's another chief there who will prevent us from sending anything. He's a paramount chief of that island <coughs> of Mactan. And if you don't, and just give me a boat, I will subdue him. He goes, Magellan, why? No, let's not give him. I will not give you a boat. I will go there and prove to Humabon and all of you chiefs that our forces are very powerful, our arms, everything. He did not realize na taas kayo ug tidal flat. A days before, gi, gi, gi pillage na nila ang open and I think Buaya. Now, it's mentioned that there's a there's a place called Bulaya which was which did not convert to Christianity and did not recognize the Spanish, so gitilage, gisunog, git. Mamatay ang mga tao dito. So that must have been, that must have angered. I mean, the chief of Bulaya was clearly an ally of Lapu-Lapu. And they must have converged. Okay. On the Battle of Mactan, April 27, 1,500 men met. May estimate ni Nga tulo ka flanks, no? At tubang, yan nasa likid, kilid. So imagine 500 here, 500 there. Uh, uh, so there, there, there must have been a lot, a lot of allied chiefs with lapu lapu now we know already the rest is history na pildi si patay si magellan uh, and then uh, hangyo sila in the afternoon na iuli ang patayng lawas ingon sila pula pula may mau iuli din na mo iuli eh. no so and then according to the story si <clears throat> lapu lapu sends feelers to humabon pre kanang imong alay di ang agamanan kay mga armas those your alay with full full of arms Apparently, no, that, that doesn't, his arms don't work in our, with us. So if you want to, to be, uh, continue to be at peace with us, or your harmony, kill them all. So uh, that's the other side. There's another story, according to Pige Petanga. Must have been Enrique, because Enrique, under the rules of slavery, must be released from slavery if his master is dead. But Enrique, <clears throat> he was at the, you are a slave, tapad ka sa master. During the when he, when, wherever he goes, so he was wounded. Nito siya getakilit sa Trinidad, mantingali to oya sa barko. Gipatiran siya ni Duarte Barbosa. Ingan siya nga bangon dia. Ato adi to si humabon. Ina nga manglarga na ta mga anak or sa to na. And then according to Pigafetta, this must have been the time when he plotted or something with 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 humabon through the interpreter. Now many of you think Enrique Tibono. There was an interpreter nga muslim nga anad ka trading all over the, the the south to borneo and sumatra and must have spoken uh, the 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 language there no pareho roman uh, halos pareho roman na sila the same roman sa tag ihap nila di ba o sa 245 o 78 siya sa 245 a 78 ina na roman so you could imagine na maka maka story gito sila and then they, so humabon invited Everyone, and this is where I turn to this slide now. Humabon uh, invites the the crew, the entire expedition, to have brunch or to have uh, the dinner. No, kaon alang. Uh, we don't know at that time. Like, this could be in the afternoon. No, this could be yeah, and, and, or it could be in the evening. Well, the best time to slaughter people would be probably be at night. No, or kilong kilo. 
from Anna. The Gafeta describes it as dinner, but we really don't know. Um, I mean, I, I, I'm not familiar with what, what time it was that this happened. But what we know is some of the members of the crew stayed behind to guard the ships. So Luisila was like our own, and all the rest went there. And one of these guys, uh, Carvalho, I think, who later becomes the head of the expedition, notices that before the start of the dinner, si Kaninggita, Iksooni Humabon, who was his advisor, which today is called Baladhai, but in the Pigafetta Chronicles, he has no name. He's just a brother of of, uh, Bala, of, of Babon. But folklore and uh, all this mga drama and ep whatever that have been made in the last century, name him as Baladhai. You know, but he's not named in any of the official records. Iyang gikuha si Pedro de Valderrama. Itang-tang niya from the table, nagida sa iyang balay. Why? Well, of course, because Padre Valderrama helped. Heal him, yet he is salvar. No, and then you have all these stories afterwards. Nga. Masig nagpadayon ang Nisa no? sa Subbo, while nalawala ng mga, mga Spaniol, nabilin man ang pare, naaman ang Santo Nino, gigift kang Juana, masig nagpadayon siya o Nisa. That's part of of of, of lore. No? Unfortunately, wag na madokument nilang legasping or what happened to Juan. It's like, ibaligya ko no, ang mga si Valderrama or whatever, no? But that's an intriguing portion of why Valderrama was removed from the banquet and brought by uh, the brother of Humabon, katong nag, tong first miracle, katong naghigda, na, ni nakabangon, unya, giampuan ni Valderrama, gipainom ni Magellan, giampuan, ni kalitog bangon yan, istorya, di ba? If you remember the, the talk I had in December. And so, <clears throat> many of them died, many many of them, kaning kuan. Many of the Crow, of course, were poisoned, but some of them were apparently, according to later stories, uh, were sold to slavery uh, on, in the South, no, through via Holo or through Borneo, were sold to slavery. Uh, but that's 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 a conject. Well, there's a story about the other expeditions that came later looking for the survivors, Luisa, Saavedra, uh, via Lobos, then eventually Legaspi. Now, my talk today is about what happened after Cebu. So we've done the review, very long one. I hope you will forgive me. But uh, so when, uh, when it was clear that the, that the, that I'm a mixture of when the, it was clear that the, the flea, the expedition was being scuttled. I uh, will be being poisoned. Ang nabilin sa 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 kuan sa mga barko immediately kanang biras ilang angkla no now as it happened gamay na lang kay sila nabilin this is about mga 40 i think or or about about 50 of them are left behind in the in the ships and uh so what will you do with three ships when there are only very few of you so they decided that the most problematic na barko na conception would be scuttled. Sunugo nila. Ilang iso, kuha nila tanang mga butang sa conception. Ibalin, abandon it, scuttle it near Bohol, at the head of Bohol, which is somewhere in of Maribuhok. No? Mauna ang legend is that it must have been burned, excuse me, somewhere in Maribuhok. Now, taking over from the from the Taking over the position of Magellan is Juan Carvalho. So he, he, he now heads the expedition. He still carries the, uh, is on board the Trinidad, no? the Capitania. Whereas Gomez de Espinosa, Espinosa, who was from the Concepcion, moves to the Victoria and uh, pilots it together with the Trinidad. The direction is to complete the original mission, which was derailed in Cebu, because Magellan stayed long. That mission was to go to the Spice Islands, which is today Maluco, composed of Tidor, Ternate, and those, those islands that produced nutmeg and cloves. So next slide, please. So they have to go now to the original mission. Next, next. 
Hello? Okay. Okay. So, no, in the back, back, please. Don't show the gold, please. Uh, okay. So, the expedition passes by the island of Panulungon, which um, in one of the versions, kining book nga kang skeleton, kaning usa sa mga versions, Magellan's voyage around, Magellan's voyage around the world, which are the three accounts, no, used to sell for only three dollars. I karon pati na mahala. Three accounts na siya, uh, three different accounts. He says it's in Panglao. No, it's it's impossible. They were moving south, southwest, towards uh, Sulu, towards the western edge of Mindanao, heading towards the Bolocas, no. The Maluko, it, it, it's impossible, right? It's in Panglao. So, the, it's probably somewhere in Negros. Eventually, they duck passing through that area. They pass through the, kanang the, the, the side of Mindanao, Kini, oh, you have some Wanga here. They go through a place called, they duck in a place called Kipit. Kay Buutan ang hari, ang chief. The chief of Kipit, his name is Raja Kalanao, accepts them you know, and welcomes them and conducts a blood compact. And this blood compact is different from the usual that you see in uh, in kind of concept ni Legaspe o ni Sikatuna sa Bohol. He takes a knife on his left hand, uh, away right hand, and then slices his left breast and, and gets a piece of blood, puts it in it. It puts it on his tongue and on his head. And all the others, yung sila pigafeta, ilas ang gibuhat as a sign of, of peace and of, of welcome. Now, according to pigafeta, they all, according to pigafeta, the people of Kipit, which today is in Labason, Zamboanga del Norte, there will be a marker that will be put there by the National Quincentennial Committee, other than the marker that will be put at uh, near the Magellan's Cross, where, where the, the mass, the baptism was held. There's going to be a marker there also, no? Um, ingon si Pigafetta, my God, Kipit is so full of gold. In every house we would go to, they have gold. No, they have gold, yung mga plato, gold na. They have all kinds of gold, gold jewelry. It's, abund it's as abundant as the hairs of their head. I don't know if this is true, no? But Sabora Norte, especially today, especially uh, Sindangan, has a lot of gold mines. No, uh, placer mines and 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 and, and gold uh, deposits. No, so it's probably true. No, uh, and uh, but they also grow, grow rice. This kind of rice, I think, is upland rice, dry rice. Ginger. They have goats. They have swine. They have fowls. So kaun yun ni kanunay. No, they stay there for a few days, and the the they enter a river. Dili direct so na yon sa show sa coast ang ang gingari an ang ang Territorio sa sa ni Raja Kalanao musul pa kag river and along the river the kangking mga balay balay ang tibabot kasa yung puloyanan and then the queen lives on top of a hill separate from his, the house of the ang reina niya yung paramount nga asawa yun naman yun ay mga line line asawa ng ginagmay tuwa sa ibabaw sa sa ka hill ko no nga dakhan ka yung mga slaves serving all kinds of food no I think the first food they ate was he described yung pigafeta parap kaya nga asin nga isda no di asinan nga isda and what is that bulad no today is buwad so yung pagkaon sa buwad while ang king wag yung kuno mo kaon ko yung sa queen nagsigil lang ino mo tuba tanaw nila tangatawa tingali wag tingali wag lang he described pigafeta pero gituyo tingali labi tanaw na to mabuhi bali mga tawa nag mo kaon ka ng buwad no well he survived sila apangti and they continued on. Okay, next slide, please. <clears throat> okay, now, you see these are the examples of gold at the Ayala Museum. And I think this is the kind of jewelry that they would have been, would have been exposed to. Kaning mga necklaces, kaning mga gold, nga panik, panik, panuka, panika, which are used for barter, no? This, this, makita ba ninyo kaning sa lower, right? This one, these are earrings, no? Uh, this is a ring, this is a, this is a panika, which you wear, but if nakipaliton mo barter, timbangon na, slice on na, ni mo ang portion. 
na imo gamiton pagbayan anti magkaanam sa ikang gamay no of course the golden tara is a buddhist uh, idol from butuan it is now in uh, the chicago film museum okay next next slide please okay now from keep it around uh, uh, from keep it the expedition heads west southwest and passes by Cagayan. No? You must remember, huh? the Gaveta is Italian. That is why people mispronounce the Balangay and they say Balanghay. The, silent na ang H. Ana. Just a silent ang H. Sa. Is what ni Spanish H silent Cagayan. This is probably, most probably Cagayan Silio or Mapun where the Jama Mapun people no, live. Mga Muslims ni sila. Um, <clears throat> gamay ni siya nga island of, uh, uh, between uh, Sulu and and Palawan. According to Pigafetta, kasagaran nagpuyo sa Kapitan sa Gagayan Silio or Mapuna Island today uh, are mga Muslim Moors, Moro nga, who were banished, ipapahawa, no? from an island called Borneo. Uh, they go about naked and have daggers adorned with. When Pigafetta says they go about naked, what he means is magbahag lang. No? That's what he means by they go about naked. Like, because in European culture, when you say you're naked, well, you're down to your previous. So I think what, what he means is nagbahag kayo. Sa umyo, pagsulo ba ng imong bangkaw, imong dagger adorned with gold kung kahubo ka? Nagi kay suloba butanganan dia sa imong bahag no ana sa kilid <coughs> as well as spears bucklers and small cuirasses adorned with carabao horn this is my the first evidence that even in the 1500s dunanay armor made of carabao and i'd like you to enter one more or makita na to what a cuirass nga made of carabao looks like so this is a uh, on the left this is from the exhibit done in, in Madrid, uh, in, uh, this was sent to Madrid in during the exposition of the 1871, 1877, uh, 1887, uh, uh, International Exposition de, de Filipinas, which was held in Madrid to sell Philippine products. And one of many of these were brought to the Museo Antropologia, the uh, Espana in 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 uh, this is in Madrid, no, nani siya dito. And then on the left you have, uh, I think this is from the Banco Central collection or from the uh, Ayala Museum collection. Tinood gini siya mga kinaut yun ni nga mga kuan mga 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 sakub adili sakuban. Ano yung tawag ani? Kuditanan sa sondang. No made of gold. Uh, were this used for uh, warfare? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Can gold? Siguro, siguro. But this could be ceremonial. This could be symbolic of authority. No. But apparently, this was from an excavation. No. Kinaw te mo ginya ang problema nato. Kuso kaya ang looting. Mo na gamay ra kag evidence. In fact, wala pa gid ka encounter archaeological excavation nga nakakod mga inani. No nga scientific nga excavation. Urgid mga kinaw te ang pamaligya o mga dinas. So next, next Okay, now. Wait, ako sang i-mute ka diyan ha, kaya marag saba ra kayo. Okay, um. Okay, now, from, uh, so they're, they're now in Cagayan, Sirio from Cagayan, the expedition proceeds to Pulawan, as, as Pigafetta calls it, or Palawan, where according to him, rice is cooked there under fire in, in bamboos. And until today, practice pa na sa mga tagbanua uh, nga magluto og, og rice in, in bamboos. So, natives go about naked again, of course, nagbahag na gina. Ang mga babae gid noon, kanang dili, mag, walay sulubon sa babaw, and have blowpipes and long wooden poison-tipped arrows. Nga, mga blowpipes nga, gidescribe din na niya nga, either uh, isda, bukog sa isda. So, you have a rich description of, of, of cultural materials tungod ni Pigafetta for the first time. Kanang, ang, ang tumoy sa arrows are fish nga 
bukog or iron nga tip. Remember, iron is so precious in 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 the archipelago at this time, no? In fact, sa time ni Legaspi, ilang iilis ang 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 <coughs> excuse me, lansang with gold. Halos parehong tim uh, no. Halos pareho bang timbang murag inana. Kay mas common ang gold, wala kayo ay iron, no? Very, very little so. Uh, so na iron nga tips or kung wala iron na ay fish bone. Unya, kun ang blow pipes katag as kayo. No? Klaro kayo kay mga tagbanwa gid di sila nga mga tao. They also value brass rings and chains, bells, knives, uh, copper wire for binding fish hooks. This area wala gold, no? Apparently mas valuable para nila ang, ang kanang mga bronze, no? Mga copper na mga products. And here for the first time you have like uh, the bigger peta describing Describing mga men nga magbuhi lang yun og cocks para lang yun pang away. No? Fighting cocks. Uh, and according to Bigafeta, the rice wine, pangasi, uh, or, or what is it? It's called lambanog among the people of, of Batangas. No? Sa ato, pangasi. Sa Subanon, pangasi. Rice wine is stronger than the one of palm or the tuba. Uh, if you enter one more, I can show you... Um, kanang image of my fighting cock and bamboo nga pag andam og bamboo uh, pag luto og rice on bamboo which is actually very very uh, very environmentally sound no except no matay lang ta mahurot ta nang kawayan eventually kung kita tanan mo gamit ani okay next slide please so the expedition calls palawan uh, uh, somewhere in brooks point city Tago saw today, Barong Barong, Brooks Point. They call it the land of promise. Ingon speaker peta. You know why? Because they suffered great hunger before finding it. So, gikan sa kipit, pag-agi nila sa kagayan silyo, wala nila sila halos, wala nila sila kaon. No? Pag-abot nila, dunggo sila somewhere in Brooks Point. Nakakaon na sa din town sila. Kahit they meet another chief, almost like the one in kipit. No? And they had a blood compact na pariho sa dyan sa blood compact dili pareho ani kang legaspi ila mang ipatulo no ah, sa mara nang kumagko or diris dugha na isalod ang ang dugo ibutang ni mix og bino or tuba nga inom kini lahi pareho gyud pud nato sa mara nang dugan kwaon na in the breast with one of our knives among kutsilyo and upon bleeding touching the tip of his tongue and his forehead in token of the truest peace we did the same so mo gyud pud nga klase sa blood compact kasi kasi no? okay next I think the the word the word kasi kasi is kasing kasing, no? It's the heart mag blood compact ka sa kasing kasing. I, 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 your heart is one kasi kasing, no? Kasing kasing. Yung yeah, di ba na madunggan sa dili train nga ear so gisuwat na nila kasila o kasi kasi. But I really think the blood compact would have been kasing kasing. No? Okay, next. Ah, wait. Okay, next. Okay, now. The expedition departs from Palawan, from Brooks, Brooks Point, on 21 June 1521, via Balabac, uh, which is the coast, southern coast of Palawan. Now. As the expedition approaches Brunei in Borneo, they witness another St. Elmo's fire. No? Uh, oy, what is St. Elmo's fire? No? You, can we, you can Google that. There's an explanation. It usually happens kung padung mag thunderstorm or bag una human ang thunderstorm there's electric charge on the masts of sail of, of of big sails basa siya it's electrically electrically charged nya dunay kusog ang lightning musiga na siya and this is considered good luck among mariners why is it good luck because humana ba ang bagyo humana ang storm mugawas na ang St. Elmo's so good luck it's okay mo magsantil mo gud nga humana ang uwan humana ang unos no humana ang unos so good luck yun na siya. Kaya kung grabe pang unos, eh, nalunod ka, adin yung kakita sa until mo, patay na ka, no? So good luck yun na siya. Now on 8 July 1521, the expedition enters the port of Brunei and here, impressed yun ka ayon si Pigapeta, no? Sa sa king sa Brunei. Wa sila, wa sila na yung tagbua. Dunggo ra sila kung sa kalugar. And the following day, the king of Brunei sends a prow. Prow, kanang barko, kanang brad. Sa lipsip, kanang, yeah, kanang uh, sailboat ba? 
nga nai outrigger no nai cutting kana and and uh, both ends of the of the perao nya kuan gina kanang carve gyud na no nagina carving no are uh, worked in gold so nai gold leafing so gi uh, pounded nga gold unya ipilit sa sa carving sa sa tubangan ug sa luyo sa dakong baruto nga gi carve no? um yeah nai dagan anang mga remnants na picturean sa mga Americano in the early 1900s when they went to Hulo on Sulu and Basilan nga mga guapo ay carving nga mga barko. Ay lamang gipamatay ang mga carvers kini mga Americano pag gubat si Mindanao pag conquer nila na mo na mamatay ang tradition. Amay na lang kayong mo carve karong mga bar, mga baruto mga mga sa lipsipan mga ba, uh, sa sa Muslim South no um so the king of brunei sends a parao decorated with both ends uh, uh, worked in gold and bearing a blue and white ba blue and white banner surmounted with peacock feathers so klaro gyud kay nga kahibaw gyud ni ang king of brunei his paramount position in in this area no and then in on the on the parao on the on the boat eight old native chiefs uh were on the boat and then they near the ships and they all visit the ships one by one. They enter the ships and then give, bear gifts. Nagdadag mga gift. Familiar ang ang king sa ang king of Brunei. Ining mga dag kung mga barko. Dili siya stranger to this. The Portuguese would have uh, done the same to him earlier. So he was familiar with the strength of the the power of these ships. And he, he brought gifts of silk, cloths, betel nut, mga kanding, fowls, wani kauni mga tawana. And sugar cane for sugar cane juice as well as rice wine. No. Um, yeah, next slide, please. <clears throat> so, asa ka kita, manto ka sa kalugar nga, nga stranger ka, indunggo ni mo, tagaan pa ka gift. No? So, di ganin mo ka ila. So, kwan yun ka nang magdanimos ang king of Brunei nila. No? <clears throat> uh, Saripada ang name sa king of Brunei. He sends another three prows on 15 July, 1521. Nya yeah, kani kompleto o gamelan kani kani kuan gamelan may tawag ana sa Muslim South kanang kanang nai kulintang nai drums and I float no it's the, it's the native orchestra ba? surrounded the ships the play ang mga tulo ka barko nga napuno og mga kung 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 Made of various kinds. This time, dili mga selina, dili mga cloth, but lain lain classing mga pagkaon, mga snacks made of rice, no? Made of rice. Kadang I I, I click kuno ka usa. I think I have a sample of Brunei nga nga delicacy. Ay wala di ay. Sige ba? Ah, on, ba balik ta. Can we move back? I have no example di of of Brunei nga rice cakes, but lain lain nga classing mga puto, lain lain like, mga color, mga green, na yung mga budbud, na yung mga mix, no? Pariyor gyud sa Japan sa atua. And they were given all kinds made of rice. No? They were also told nga pwede na mo musulod sa royal city sa imperial headquarters. And they were given I think anang elepante to ride on nya ang gifts nga ilang gi present sa mga chiefs, mga lingkuranan, katong gi the same things that they gave to humabon mga pariyo, velvet chair, kanang cap nga beret, kanang cloak nga gamit ra winter nga klaro kay ang musulob din ni mapaigs ka init but ma royal kay tanaw no kay velvet in ana they presented niya ingon ang mga chiefs dada na dito sa imperial city kay pasudlo na mo so they went to the the imperial city and when they went inside ang tanang balay kuno naa sa by byon all the houses were on stilts except the royal palace no? so then they went through on yang elepante gikarga ilang mga gifts but they were not allowed to see the king. Madunggan na nila through tubes ang instruction sa king. No, na ako na yung wall o niya na yung tube. Niya, manaay ang prince, yung atubang niya. <coughs> Excuse me. Na yung to communicate, no? They could actually see the king inside a room uh, on a throne, but they were not allowed to look at him. No? In fact, ipaduko sila gaayo. No? Ana. So, grabe ang, ang sense of, of royalty sa king of Brunei. 
the main road on uh, uh, right on, and are not forbidden and, and are not forbidden and they are forbidden really and are not forbidden they are forbidden to see the king and so they return to their ships via two prows prows uh, parao on, on on that same day now next <clears throat> next slide please okay now on 29 July 15th, so you have layo layo na niyo they left on 2 May 15th to May 2. Now this is July 29. Hapit na ni magupat kabuan. Over 100 prows and junks suddenly approached the ships as they dock uh, off the coast of Brunei. The expedition immediately goes on war footing. Gubat na yon buong kag binumbahay na yon sa mga prow, <clears throat> and they capture the son of the king of Luzon. On board one of the junks, scholars suspect that if this is the son of the king of of Luzon, this must be in the time of Legaspi, forty-four years later, forty-five years later, what is no forty-four in Cebu, but forty-nine years later in Manila, this must be Raja Matanda. Okay, if he's about twenty-five years old man at this time, you add forty-five, he's about. 70 years old. So, maugid ni tingali ko no si Radya Matanda. It so happens that this this prince, the son of, of the Radya of Luzon, so I mean Radya of, of Manila or Tondo or Asang Dapita, it so happened is uh, Captain General of the King of Brunei. You can see immediately the relationship between Manila and Brunei, which uh, skirts the Visayas because they could travel through the side of Palawan directly to Manila without passing through this the um, the uh, the Visayas, which had their own trading relations with each other and with the with, with Sulu, you no. Know? Whereas Brunei, the Brunei had direct relationship apparently with Manila. You know? Now this king, this is prince, had just arrived. From a pillaging of a town called a uh, kingdom called Lua Lua, also in Brunei, because they were heathens. Dili moto o dili magpa convert o Muslim, meaning mga ubaboy, no kusub ka ubaboy anay. This was probably mga kanang mga natives karon gihapon sa Borneo, the Dayak, for example, the Dayak people. Okay, they're they're indigenous peoples. They they they're not Muslims, I think. So there's there's always this even on king there's. Uh, there's always this constant fight in Bru between Brunei and these hidden kings who are also very powerful. Complete sa mga equipment, equipment, makigubat, isog sa, no? uh, but they, they, he just arrived. Now, unfortunately, instead of, of arresting him para magamit nila as for ransom sa king of Brunei, para makatrade sila kay, si, wapang, wapang may padulungan ilang istorya, di islato bangon sa king sa Brunei, Sayo sayawan lang sila, music musikan, pakan on. Pero wa, wa sila na karga nga, nga cinnamon, wa sila na karga nga cloves, wa gin sila na trade. Kato unta ilang gabiton. Kay Captain General biya to sa King sa Brunei, no, na minyo sa usa siya mga anak, most probably. Gibuhi an mani Carvalho. Kurakot ni Carvalho. In exchange for gold from the King of Brunei, gi in payment for gold, iyang gi. Buhian ang prince, of course, nauli sa king sa Brunei, gidepose siya, nasakpan man nila, gidepose siya. Oh, this is where Sebastian de Elcano appears in the record. Now, you must remember, if you read uh, the Chronicles of Pigafetta, there's something wrong between Pigafetta and Sebastian Elcano. He barely mentions him in the entire episode until now. This is the first time his name is mentioned there's something wrong with the relationship between Pigaveta and Elcano. It's never been explained, but he didn't like maybe they didn't like each other. Ana, there must be something wrong. So, we did not want to dismiss Ana, but you'll never know why. So, Elcano takes over. The expedition is now in the middle of a fight between Moros of Brunei and some powerful heathens, mga non believers, mga irehis, nga mga indigenous peoples. Mga animists, no? Nga di mo tuo o the Muslim faith. No? Pariho sa Visayas. No matter how much the Muslims have, many of those claim Lapu-Lapu is Muslim and all that. Oh, there is no proof. Clearly, these were pintados, nakatato, napuno o gold, ang ipon, mukhaon o baboy. That's not allowed in Islam. 
no? Ngao ni ang mga kontra ni sa King of Brunei, no? Whereas the, the chief of Sulu did not did not do that. Nakig trade nila tanan purpose kin sa Sulu mamalit og mga slaves, makig trade, bahala na mo diyan. Tumog dili pagka Muslim, lahi ang ang King of Brunei. No? Pagid siya kanang na naagi siya. Ah, uh, inana nga uh, zeal. Okay, next slide please. Hmm. Ito, astas na mo din yung historia. Eh? Okay. <clears throat> so, around October 15, August 1521, the expedition leaves Brunei and spends nearly a month going to the islets play, uh, and places in Borneo in search for food. So, go na sa kagutom. Imagine they only had food when they were in Kipit. And when they were uh, in, in, in Brunei, they were given food as long as they were there. But once they st started leaving, wala na sa sila food. No? In September, however, they enter Simbonbon, which nobody identifies today, but the scholars think it is still in Borneo to repair and cork the two ships. Kanang appliance siya o kanang caulking, ba? kanang para di mo sood ang tubig. No? Resin, para di mo sood ang tubig. Tagok. And they killed a wild boar. Tingnan ni kakuan, they killed a wild boar for food. Loin taong kayo. Nakukuno kayong boar niya. Yung pag here, Pigapeta describes, the ko nung kayong insects nga maglakaw-lakaw. Nga, nag-isood ko nung box for nine days. Nga, maglihok-lihok sa sood sa box. Nga mga leaf, mga walking leaves. Dili na walking leaves. Mga insects na kanang leaf insects. Parehan yung example, no? Next. Next slide. Okay. Now, on 30 September 1521, the expedition now begins, begins, gutom kaayo, wahi pagkaon. After caulking, wa pasta kaabot sa maluko, wa pa sila karga ng cinnamon, white cloves, wa tanan. So, they turn to piracy. As they approach Palawan, they encounter junks or boats. We uncap on one of those boats is Tuan Mahmud. Tuan Mahmud, Muslim governor of Palawan. After a brief skirmish with a junk, he was riding on while coasting the Cape of Palawan, looking desperately for food. Kini si Mahmud, buutan nga, nga governor, ingin eh, siya ay ipanggutong, brade, eh, mo. Or I can provide you food. So, gi hostage si siya. Gi hostage siya. O niya, inan siya nga, after pila ka days, bring us 400 measures of rice, 20 kababoy, 20 goats, 150 chickens, and Mahmud, true enough, fulfills the run, this ransom. And other than that, punan pag yun, o palm wine, bananas, coconuts, Sugar cane. Mura ka, gitulis na ka. Hindi po siya kagtulis ako yung ko. No? Buutan siya. No? Nadlock yung tingali siya po sa mga armas aning dagko sa kayong mga barko i-compare ni mo sa, sa junk. No? For his generosity, giuli sa mga Spanyol ang iyang mga archivos ka ng uh, kung ang pakaayong nga mga armas ka ni Adto. Mura mga gag, ginagmay nga kanyon ba? Because that's how Rifles began, no? They were cannons and then they were made smaller, no? Pero kanyo nagyapog now, archivals. Pero madala na nimo. And bladed weapons are returned to him together with gifts for him and his brother. The usual gift, cloak na sad, cap na sad, gamay mga puthaw, trinkets, lingkuranan, mga inanar gini. I think by the time ni abot ang, ang, ang doha kabarko dito sa Spain, hurot na tanan lang lingkuranan. More ipang hatag sa mga chief, mga likuranan. You know why? Because ang kita magyaka magunta sa salog on mats. That's why ang, ang atong lingkuranan, lingkod yun, yaka yun, lingkod yun. No? Ang atong bisaya for for chair is silia good. Mungguha mo sa Spanish word siya or silia spelling. Because wala man tayo inaana ang klase niya. Kuan yun, nataas na. Kuan kayo magkaon naman sa salog, no? Inaana magyaka. So, important thing, kaayo ang furniture. Musyak mo ito lang, hindi doon tanya yan. Okay. Next slide, please. <clears throat> now, on October 15, well, they're now in Hulu, they're now back in Palawan. Uh, in Kipit, they stay for two days. Balik sa Kipit. Butan niya po kay ang king, welcome niya po sila, pakaon niya po sila. And then, they proceed to Hulu and Basilan. In Hulu, on Hulu, Pigafetta reports Two very large pearls. This is a story in the King of Brunei. There's a story there. You have to read Pigafetta of how these two 
pearls nga mura og itlog sa manok kadaka which was supposed to be owned by the king of Brunei were transferred to the king of the, the chief the sultan of the sultan of Brunei the sultan of Holo no? in the same manner that the sultan of Brunei gifted the sultan of Holo with North Borneo which later was rented by the British and until today we have not stopped our claim for North Borneo gift man siya from Brunei kuno for helping the king of Brunei uh, during a period nagi kudita siya ang iyang igsuon ba yang 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 igsuon man tingali ito nagkudita niya ning laban ang sultan of Sulu nagpadaog soldiers mo gihatag ang northern north borneo which today we continue to claim but because we are members of the ASEAN dili ta magkagubot-gubot dili na to gubot-gubotong kayo but until today the british i heard are still paying the heirs of the sultan of uh, holo uh, Sulu for that anyway that's an aside the trivia so the ex expedition after go going for two days uh, after a few days a uh, two days sa uh, uh, holo ba they were looking for someone to guide them to Maluko. And everywhere they go, walay musulti. No? Ana. The expedition passes by Kawit and Subanan, which are all both in Zamboanga City today. I will put a marker there also uh, uh, during the quincentennial on these dates. And uh, there here, the Gafeta describes that the best cinnamon is grown in as uh, in, in, in an island called Monoripa, which is Manalipa Island of Sambuanga City. No? There he describes seeing houseboats. Can you enter one more and see a uh, press one more? That's a houseboat of a bajau. And I think what Tigapeta saw were bajaus growing uh, with houseboats and uh, at the same time dealing in cinnamon. No? Trading with the Portuguese and with whoever wanted to buy the bark and the leaves of cinnamon. Next slide. So, around late October, the expedition heads northeast towards Magindanao from Sambuanga Peninsula. It moves around, in fact, Manguang Tubig, there is a Lumbia, sa Amuas, Pagadian, what Mapil, sa National Quincentennial Committee, kay Kajutra kay ng Huang Tubig. Then they reach Cotabato, which at this time is called Magindanao, where the Sultanate of Magindanao is based. There they capture a Binigday, which is akin to an Aprao, but it's locally called Binigday, as, as Pigafetta calls it, with 18 men, and among them were chiefs on board, including the brother of the Sultan of Mindanao. And the Sultan of Mindanao, the brother agrees. Sige. I will guide you, I'll join you, I'll guide you to Maloko. Maloko. And the direction is towards southeast. Nabali mo. Nga nung padong mamuk south to west. Nabot na lang mong Brunei, nagkana mong kalayo sa Maloko. Diri taagi sa Pika side. Okay. Heading southeast, the expedition enters a cape with people called Binayan. Today, in this is in Kamanga, Maasim, Sarangani. According to Pigafetta, these are people who eat human hearts. Yeah, ito slob of juice. There are, there's a possibility that this is in reference kuno to Manobos of Eastern Mindanao. Kaya doon do, do ako mga stories during the early American period of Manobos eating human hearts. I don't know if this is true. No, If I were Manobo, I would probably deny this. No, Gardilip me kanang cannibals. But, uh, well, I, I really don't know, but this is the supposition, the, 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 the supposition na basig mauning mga manobo. But they don't use citrus juice kung nang kumuka ang heart. Anyway, next. <clears throat> Kanang ilang mga kontra na, ha? Dili ni anyone nga, eh. umuagi, ya, putlog. Kanang ilang mga kontra niya, kwao ng heart, kauno, lutoon. No, i-mix o ganang libong sito, tuslob. This is probably an example of the kind of binigday with the chiefs on board no, that 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 were that uh, the fleet encountered nga ilang gidakop ang igsuon sa sultan of of uh, Magindanao next now so on 26 october 1521 saturday night the expedition encounters the kusog nga unos 
Kasi one term day ko no for Baguio. Unos. At Birahan Bartobalak. As uh, Pigafeta calls it. Now it's called Batolaki. It's in Sarangani, Davao Occidental. Where they again find another San Telmo. This time na ay kuyog nga. Santa Ana ba to? Nga napatoy ko sa Santos. No? Nagkuha na gini, nag-hallucinate na sila anis kagutom tingali. But Sindelmo's fire is a normal occurrence after a storm, as I said earlier. In open sea. People, when they look at it, they think it's on land, but actually it's it's lining the mast. At a sail, kanang, say, tawa, kanang, kanang crossbeam, mast ni siya sa barko. Crossbeam, magbitay ang sail. Kanang niya, magbasa man na after a storm. Kanya, during a thunder, kanang, na mga lightning sa unahan mo, siga na siya, na dili, masunugay mo, sail. No? Spread light. So, the expedition heads, heads on uh, following the for Kandihar. No? Kandihar. Now, Balut Island, Sarangani. On the way to Sarangani Island, where they, according to Pigafetta, where gold and pearls are found. They, and they take two more pilots, mga natives, by force, to guide them to Maluko, the Islam Salig sa anak sa Sultan, <laughs> nga naidalang anak sang bata, the Islam Salig, kuha pag Islam Duha. Sakto sana. No, isaray mo guide ni mo. Patay tuyo kun plang inoon ka. Murag mga taxi driver. First time ni mo dali sa Cebu. Sa una, kanihan to. Karun di naman pwede. Kaya ma-report naman ni mo sa LTO o sa kuan. Sa una, kahit nung doon ko mga 20 years, 30 years, 40 years ago. Kusugi na historia nga. Ito tuyo kag mga taxi driver. Karun ang meter. Magkanam yun ka na kong bayad. May inaniyon yun meet sa anak sa sultan. sa Awig so sultan ha. Inyo kong gihostage. Sige, ito yung tuyog ta hantod, butomon mo mga matawa na mo. So, of course, like another two guides, this is called triangulation. When you have three people agreeing, I'm only getting a lady. No, I put them on separate ships and tell the, tell the sultan, uh, the sultan's brother, asama ng ruta, kani. Pagkata na speakers, kana po, oh, then it's confirmed, sakto. Okay, so it's called triangulation. It's try, it's best scientific research uh, technique in in, in social research, you triangulate to validate, to valid, validate a fact. No? <laughs> Next. Ah, uh, okay. This is, uh, this is in Sar Yeah, this is in Sarangani. Yeah, this is in Sarangani. This is, I think this is Batolaki, which is becoming a tourist attraction because of kanang mga white sand. This is clearly volcanic, ang, ang origin, aning iyang Bragging rice ba? Yan, na coralline. Uh, at volcanic, at tectonic ang origin sa pag-form. I think in one of the Sarangani beaches I saw while doing research, they claim it's it's going to be the next Boracay. No? So, skanindot ang tao ay COVID. Next. <clears throat> next. Okay. We're almost near now the end. I mean, in fact, we're at the end. On 28 October, the following day, the expedition departs Sarangani Island for Maluku. Straight na niya, along the route, the son of the Sultan of Maguindanao, together with his son, so grandson, uh, uh, the uh, nephew of the Sultan of, of Maguindanao, so that's the brother and the son of, of that brother, jump, ship, and swim no? as soon as they pass an island. But the two pilots remain, and so they continue on the route until on 8 November 1521, after passing through many islands with their chiefs, they grab me this. It's a long discussion. Now, not long, but maybe three pages. But in, in all the islands where they stop, stop over, all of them are Raja. Tawag ni kwan mga Raya, Raya, Raya. No, ni, ni, ni Pigafetta. No, Raya, Kwan, Raya, Raya, especially the Raya of the Raya of Sangir Island. Until finally, the expedition enters this set of islands. This one, this one, this one, this one. These are the famed Spice Islands. No? And it's called, uh, the, they entering the first island they met in the Maluku or Molokas. is Tidor. Tador ang tawag ni Pigapeta Tadore. Later in the morning, the king of Tidor welcomes the expedition. They stayed there until December 23. 
sip-sip kayo ni ang king of Kwan, of Tidor. He offers everything. Oh, I will buy for you all the cloves, all the cinnamon. Ato ko sa Bakyan Island, the next island, and Anna. Yeah, I recognize you, the power of Spanya, blah, blah, blah. Until it becomes very clear, later, ingon siya, kontra miya ng hari sa Ternate, the next island. Yeah. This is Tidor, this is Ternate Island. And that's a familiar with the geography, a geology. I mean, yeah. This is already in, uh, yeah, in, the, in the Maloko Islands, no? In Indonesia. And so, Ingon siya, Oye, dinangga kay ko na ang, ang hari sa Spanya. Ako yung hatag ang tanan niyo ko sa iyo. He expresses love for a king he does, has not even met. Kaya ang ternate, alay sa Portuguese, kita siyang katsila. Ako ni alay kay maggubat ni kanunay aning, aning terna, taranate or ter, the, the chief of ternate. So, Tiga peta should have realized, no, ha? like everyone else, even today, gamit-gamit lang yung tasa, gahoms mga tao, sip-sip lang ta, para maalay na to. No? Anyway, eventually, nagka-sinamtanay rin sila tanan, na napuno ang barko, o mga cloves, o cinnamon, enough, I think, to pay for the loss of the other ships and for the financiers of the expedition. Doon naman to private financier. Nga di sila maulawan inig, inig balik. No, mamani lang pangita. A few ceramics. Plus, nagkakarga, nakakuha pag ito lang. Duha or upat ka mga natives of, 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 of mga taga-maluko. No, I think duha na namatay, but the others eventually reach Spain, ipresent nila sa king. Now, on this, so I'll cut the story short para mahuman na ta. On December 23, they were about to depart and dili when uh, about to depart, depart, yung kalit o ka ng sulod o tubig sa barko sa Trinidad, yung leak ang, ang, ang lead ship. So ilang gipatrace, gitrace, gidive sa king, sa mga tao, sa ningon nasad ang king sa didol. Pinangga na yun ako, Espanya, aro man ka uli, yun mo. Ang kong mga tao mo dive, so grabe ang description ni Pigapeta. 30 minutes ko nung sa ilaw ang mga tao ni sa ship sa Tidor, pinangitas, bangag, grabe sa ng 30 minutes, no? So these are pearl divers that really go down and look for pearls at 60, 60 feet, 120 feet. Yeah. Nangabuto na ang mga dunggan. So probably, no, ay kayo magunit sa ilang ginawa, pero I doubt it mabuhik ang 30 minutes. Anyway, so wag yun nila makiti. So, the decision was, i-transfer ang mga karga sa, ter sa, sa ano wait, ibilin ra ang karga sa, ter sa Trinidad, ipang exchange mga lansang, mga insan, and then, <clears throat> Ayuhon siya. And, well, eventually we know that that uh, wala gid ni maayo. In fact, ang Trinidad was captured by the Portuguese uh, and and was ransomed ang mga members. And eventually, after nakauli dito sa Spain uh, in, in September 1522, ang Victoria, uh, ang mga survivors na 22 kabuok sa Trinidad, na uli rasad a few months later, uh, na ransom sa after an agreement with the Portuguese, no? So, uh, from Ternat, from Tidor, the expedition went back to Ladrone. Tuyok na nila. This is now the completing the circumnavigation. They went now back to the, to the, to their, to their original route, route, and uh, eventually, uh, from, from Guam, they went to, to Spain, to San Lucar de Barrameda. Which um, they arrived almost to the, two years to the same day that the the expedition started, no? um, and um, yeah, Sebastian and, Elcano and, and, uh, guides them. So, ang Victoria get ang ning about mo karong March, di ba? I think everybody has not is not aware, but there is an there's a Victoria ng karak that will arrive in Cebu. I don't know what what the preparations are. But there's supposed to be, and we're meeting the other week about this, and it was, this was discussed as an aside. Yeah. Magwala pa magready ang mga preparations. But there is a Spanish and a Portuguese version of the Victoria, and the Spanish version is coming here to Cebu supposedly in March. Kung ano March man, ng April man ng about si um, Magellan Diri. Hadlok tingnan sila ka ato silang pati yun inig April 28. So March sila muan ni ang kining Victoria, it's a replica of 
of the Karak, not the Galleon. No? Galleons come later, sa time ni Legazpi. Kaning tanang mga barko ni Magellan uh, as a, sa fleet, sa expedition, mga Karak na slightly smaller prog mga lancha. No? Prog mga lancha. Okay. Next slide. I think I, 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 this is the end. So, in conclusion, and there you find the nutmeg favorite sa mga, Ameri uh, mga Europeans. They were looking for this. And the Dutch, you know what they did? They they killed all the... They, they cut all the nutmeg trees. When the Dutch took over Indonesia, they cut all the nutmeg trees uh, of, of, of all over and, and had only nutmeg grown in Banda Island, I think, para mas mamonopolize nila ang trade. Anak, ang grabe. Ka, mabuang ang mga taos nutmeg. Kita, ato mga pagkaon, why nutmeg? Cake rin na to, butangan og nutmeg. Gamay ang kapi, tingali. And then cloves. No? Wala, wala gid na. It's not even grown in the Philippines. I don't I don't know if anyone grows cloves in abundance. But did to git ni sa. Kung ano, paborito kayo nila kay Luod mo kayong, luod mo kayong karning baka kung wala ning mga inan. So it took 27 months of the expedition to reach Maluku. The westerly route was proven feasible. And uh, Magellan, if he was alive, would have already completed the circumnavigation in Maloko because he was there in 1511, 1511 in Ternate, where he bought Enrique de Malaca, then a young boy uh, of about 15 or 12 or 13. Kind of If he did not dilly dally in Cebu, he would not have any celebration. Uh, of the Quincentennial. So we thank Magellan for dropping by in Cebu. We thank Lapu-Lapu for killing him because now we have a reason to celebrate our bravery. But if he was alive, if he reached the Spice Islands, then and there, he would have already completed the circumnavigation. No? It is clear that the fleet, the expedition, turned to piracy, which is not allowed in explorations. You are not supposed to take advantage of the natives, you're supposed to trade, you're supposed to do not harm them. Raginas instructions sa King, no? Carlos I, and repeated by Felipe II and all the other leaders later. Hala, okay, go tom na kayo. Yan yung AK, yung AK, yung AK, yung AK, puno kayo. Hala, sige, hato ning Corneron niya, kuwaon na ilang mga pagkaon, hostage na ni sila tanan. So, nagpera si. Uh, <clears throat> there were still much more challenges on the way back to Spain. In fact, pag about ang, if there's a painting, I, I don't know if it's a painting by Goya of the arrival of the fleet in, in San Lucar de uh, the expedition in San Lucar de Barameda. Gisi gisi ilang mga sinina. No, ni ang sailboat, ah, ang sail, ang layag sa, sa karako, ah, tinapakan na. Tay, tay. So, it, it was not an easy thing. No? They were probably eating their shoes. Sa, 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 uh, sabawan. No? Uh, I think uh, you, will, you will learn about this at the Feliz Santa Maria is publishing a book on what was what food was eaten during the expedition. It's going to be launched here, I think, in April. Or they're going to bring up. It's going to be launched here, according to the National Quincentennial Committee. It's going to be launched here in April 26, I think. Probably uh, for San Pedro. I'm not sure where, but yeah. For, and then um, what we have because of this is Pigafetta's ethnography. Very vital and description here sa mga tao, ang vocabulario nga iyang ipangandam, ang mga words, many of which we don't speak anymore, but this vital, I, the, he, he, it, he would not have invented them. The, he, this is not something uh, ni Antosias Italy, na watch mga libro, na minaos, mga selos, unya, so what, so what. In the manner of the kaning controversy ni Marco Polo, nga wak kunugin mo anto sa China, kaya ano kunung wak ka-describe sa pansit, sa noodles, nga, <laughs> dan kumang ka sa China. So, it's clear that Pigafetta, the fleet, went around the globe. And the descriptions are, are thick. They, they, they enliven us. There's the first eye, because the colonial experience would destroy so much of what we had. No? Halos di, taka, kung ano ba kata yung gold ganito? In ano ba kata yung jewelry? Kung ano ba kata yung inanan niya? Kusog pa kayong looting karon sa mga lubong. Here in Pigafetta, we have a picture of what we were and how rich our culture is. And if only for that, we thank the expedition, no matter what, how much they did to us, uh, they also left us this much to remember. Thank you very much.
Mana? <laughs> Thank you, Sir Jobers. <laughs> Kata. Oh, <laughs> At least Globe is respecting our signal. Okay, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Dagan kayong salamat Sir Jobers Snow for telling us about the further adventures of the what remains of the crew of Magellan after he died uh, in the Battle of Matan and some of them were massacred. Um, eight Most, uh, massacred or kanang became slaves, no? Uh, yeah. It took them about eight months, more or less, or not, to reach uh, the Molokas uh, after the Molagi grabbing adventures. After that, they said they had further adventures, uh, going back to uh, Spain, and then daghan kayo salamat sa sir kay daghan kami nakatunan sa maanang Saint Elmo's fire unsa tung mga basig na ay ko an ay mga uh, cannibals at tong mga on o human heart. It's very interesting also. Um, unya, itos na bug libon si ito, rada ito ang citrus juice. <laughs> so, um, I, I think that's a, this is a, an afternoon full of uh, surprises and uh, many things that we learned. Okay, baguna mong na, 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 na dunggan. But before we go to our QA, Sir Joe Burst, um, I would like to. Uh, acknowledge actually a lot our mga viewers karon nang namino good sir mostly teachers there are teachers from DepEd but there are also teachers outside of region 7 like Surigao State University Surigao City na namino ni mo sir from Iloilo Maspate Dumaguete Leyte and and koan what was the other one Makati, no? Makati. And then uh, we even reach as far as Illinois, sir. Someone, uh, there are people also listening to your lecture. And we'd like to thank them. Thank you for joining us this afternoon in a GSK webinar na to. Unya, let's have the questions. By the way, after uh, when we have a question, after that we'll, we'll uh, alternate the trivia, no? Para nasa ilingaw, gani, makabreathe sa gamay si Sir Joe Burs uh, some samtang nag-answer siya sa mga questions but first sir jobers ako ning pangutan na kay ingon ka nga if uh, if magellan had survived or actually had lived up to kanang reaching back molokas so does this mean also that uh, si koan si kinsa ni iyang ipalit nga slaves or si enrique would he be the first to circumnavigate after the first native would have been the first they would have been together they left together in 1511, went around, uh, then from Spain they came again together. If uh, both of them, well, the claim that Enrique completed the circumnavigation first is, I think, for the people of Malopo, correct? Yes, he already completed. He reached back, uh, well, he died, in, well, he disappeared in Cebu. If he reached Malopo, if the massacre did not happen, and if he did not stay in Cebu, and continued with the fleet, uh, with the expedition. He would have been back in Maloko. I mean, the oh. area where he was at, Sumatra. Now he would have been back in that area. He was bought in Ternate. So he would have been the first to complete. Woman, he's still in Cebu. Lagi. Yeah. So, it's ang Sibugid, ang, <laughs> ang Sibugid, crucial, sir. Diha, namatay si Magellan. Diha, sa nawa si Enrique. Maka, sir, nyo kam navigate na unta to sila. But if the, the Spaniards were sold as slaves, if I were, were if I were Enrique, I would join them to interpret for them as they are being sold. So he would have yeah. been back in Malok eventually. Very yeah. possible. I think he would have been back in Sumatra, yes. Wow, that's interesting to know. Uh, let's have our first question because that was my question. Now, let's have this question from Grant Shane Buendia. Is it possible that 16th century Visayans already knew about firearms like the Lataka or Rentaka? Yes, I think so. Yes, they were exposed to the traders, the Moro traders. Of course, the traders of the South of, of, of South were wary of the Visayans, the Pintados. They were feared. So wow. they would not sell them. They would not sell them these cannons. I am sure they would not sell them these cannons. It's their only defense in case of, of raiding if, if the Visayans, Pintados, go south to raid. So they, they were aware of this, but we ask questions like, why were they not, why did they not have them during the Battle of Makta? They, the, the Muslims in the south, the, the people of Sulu uh, who were trading with them did not sell them. They sold them Chris, uh, Kampilan, 
which come from Mindanao, but apparently Correct. they did not sell. And I can understand yeah. why. Yeah. All right. I hope that answers your question, Ms. Bendia. Um, just a comment here. We have somebody, Cindy Valera, mentioned, sir, that uh, these talks of ours, uh, this these webinars, these kinds of webinars, should really be promoted among the teachers because they're so that they can be relayed to uh, their students. You are right, Miss Cindy Valera. Thank you very much for sharing that. Um, let's go to our first trivia question. Fast fingers, please. Trivia number one, the first one to answer. Who headed the expedition on board the Trinidad after the massacre in Cebu in 1521? The name, please. All right. Uh, hopefully we get a, a winner already. Anyway, let's go to our second question. Do we have our second question? Or is Sir Jober still here? Is Sir Jober still here? Okay, uh, it would be, we would have to wait a bit. Uh, I hope the Sir Bong Rafael, who is asking this question, can wait for a bit while we're trying to get Sir Jobers back, maybe uh, just to, um, while waiting for Sir Jobers to come okay. back. Oh, there! Hi, this one, sir! <laughs> Okay, this is the question, sir. Who was probably their interpreter during the late part of the Philippine part of the expedition if Enrique wasn't mentioned anymore? I think after Enrique left. Yeah, that's an important question. Thank you, Bo. Pigafetta uh, uh, describes that they were making signs. They were apparently making signs. So, when, in fact, when they were in Kipit, they looked for the queen. They, According to Picafetta, they made signs asking where the queen was. I don't know how you make a sign asking the, where the queen was. <laughs> so apparently they understood each other, despite the problem. Well, when you're hungry, you just say like this, Anna, and then I'm sure the king would say, So that, that, yeah, that's an important question. They lost an interpreter and they had to go by signs. Yes. Correct. The universal language is actually sign language, not any mm -hmm. other language. Came up because of the language. If you notice, Pigafetta, he makes a vocabulary, so he probably also started learning some of the words. He yeah. would have pointed to, oh, kanang, all this food, all this mata, all this kwan, whatever. So he would have just said, or no, they cannot read his writing, but he would have said, uh, kwan, the, the saya term for cinnamon. Or, or mm. for clothes, or what? And they would say, ah, okay. So that's important why he had this vocabulary of, of all the, the places where they stayed longer. Correct, yeah. correct. He was an interpreter, I think, yes. So they lost an important uh, part of their journey because they lost an interpreter. Anyway, Sir Jobers, uh, here's another comment from Jason Murata, a very very informative talk this afternoon, sir. We'll definitely look for additional readings on this topic. Okay, by the way, we have our, before we go to our second trivia, Ginhawa Gamay, Sir Jobers. Uh, trivia winner, our first trivia winner is Joseph Job Ragasaho Jeronimo. One of our, uh, yeah. Thank you for, for answering quickly. We will One of our team will contact you for how, uh, how you can claim our prize. So let's go to our trivia number two, quickly. Fast fingers. How many months did it take for the expedition to reach Maloko? Roughly thereabouts. Okay. Sige. Uh, let's go to our next question. From Ferdinand Azcaraga, thank you for your question. Do you think Kipit was inhabited by Bisaya based on their romance for gold? I think Kipit then and now were occupied by Subanans. There today, they're still there. So this would have been the Subanans. And the Subanans are famous for gold working, for the jewelry and all that. So they'd be Subanans. Is there still gold there, sir? A lot of gold? There's a lot of gold in Sindangan. There's a gold mine there. The, the indigenous peoples are fighting a mine mining company there because it's yes. in the ancestral land. It's a bit sensitive for them. Yes. Correct. 
How did we lose our gold, sir, here in Cebu? We seem to have, uh, we're also a people rich in gold at that time. Well, this was the first place that, they, that was conquered. So they probably got all the gold at the start of the, yeah. from the rivers and the placers. But Toledo, uh, Carmen Copper, a large a percentage, a small percentage of copper is gold. So it's still producing gold. Yeah. We're still producing gold. In, in, what remains of the gold, sir? <laughs> anyway, is, yeah. yeah. Thank you for your, the questions. Uh, do we have another question or do we go to the trivia? Third question? Okay, let's have the next question, please. From Grant, the same person. Okay, we will entertain this one, but supposedly one question only. Was the lingua franca used in the archipelago similar to the language used in the Laguna Copper Plate inscription? The Laguna Copper Plate inscription has three, I think, languages that are being used there uh, as translated. I don't think that's the lingua franca. The, it's clear from the Pigafetta uh, vocabularios that he, he writes that many of the words we use today in Cebuano exist there already at the time. It's Malay Polynesian language. No, it's the language family is called Proto Manobo. It's part of the Austronesian uh, language family, which spread from there's a theory out of Taiwan or out of China down to New Zealand, and they, sh they share certain uh, words. So, uh, in terms of the Tamil language, which is from from uh, India and the Sanskrit based, uh, when Pigafetta arrived here, he did not see any writing among the Cebuanos. He does not mm. describe any writing except in Brunei. Now, it is in Brunei that he sees writing going on. But when Pigaf Legaspi arrives 44 years later, the Cebuanos already had writing, you know, all and all that. So in the interregnum 44 years, Sanskrit based by Bayin or whatever it's called must have entered into the practice. And yeah. that's probably trading. But I, right. I can't say what, what the lingua franca in that sense was in terms of it. Everybody would have shared certain words for trading in order to trade. That's very interesting. And for trading, they had they were able to understand because of trading. They, they were able to in Asturias, like when you talk of timba or weights, you have a different it's weight. They have a different. You'll never be able to barter. So there must have been a basis. And the, those weights were basically uh, uh, Indian weights and Chinese weights that were that were used here. They were borrowed. There, there's a lot of cultural borrowing when it comes to trade, even until today. We use cell phone. We don't have a Cebuano word for cell phone, for example. Because it's not yeah. ours. <laughs> we say cell phone. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that, sir. Uh, let's have the next trivia before we go to our last batch of questions. This is our trivia number three, who was the chief of Kipit, who conducted a blood compact with the expedition crew as a sign of peace. Fast fingers. Anyone? Okay. Let's go to our next questions, maybe our last batch. Do we have more questions? Yes, please. Next question is from Joseph Solis Alcaide Aberise. Thank you for your question, Dr. Jubers. What if uh, had Magellan never killed, was never killed in the Battle of Mactan in the hands of Lapu Lapu, do you think the actual Spanish colonization in our country would have begun in 1521, like in Mexico by Hernan Cortes? in that same year instead of 1565 in our actual history. Thank you. Thank you. That, that was what I said in the first set of the first lecture in December, that the, the important the significance of the death of Magellan was that it ended the Spanish claim to the Philippines. It delayed by 44 years. And yes, that is correct. It would have advanced uh, by 44 years, 44 years ahead. If we did not kill, if Lapu Lapu did not kill Magellan or the people of Mactan did not kill Magellan, yes. All right. I hope that's it. The, the, the question is already answered. Let's have our... Oh, by the way, we have a winner for our trivia number two. Our winner is Eska Topia. Thank you very much for answering quickly. And uh, like I said, one of our uh, team will contact you. For your prize. 
I think we have a winner for retriever number three. But anyway, let's have our last question. Is this the last question? This is the last question, sir, from Nidorima Resdeb. Is this Balibali Nganan? Good day, Dr. Jobers. Is there any significant event that happened in Butuan during the expedition? No, I'm not. No, except that the Colombo came from Butuan. They did not. They did not. They did not pass through Butuan. I you know there's a claim in of the people of Agusan that that the uh, that, that Magellan passed by Masawa there and all that. But they accepted historically by the National Historical Commission and by historians is that they, they, they passed through Limasawa. So uh, mm. as it happened, the Raja of Kulambu, uh, of Butuan was with his brother or cousin Siawi in Limasawa. So they didn't go to Butuan anymore. Yeah. yeah. So we don't know. But Butuan was very rich. If I were Kulambu, why would I point to Cebu when I know that uh, Butuan was also rich. I think he didn't like the Spaniards to go to Butuan. He wanted Humabo to experience the Spaniards. That's why he dilly dallied as he went about going north to look at Lau, going three days, going to Cebu, my God. <laughs> oh, good, sir. Um, but uh, maybe just for our viewers, our next topic actually in March, and Dr. Joe Burst actually know this because he also referred to us who should be the speaker for this. Um, we'll have something to do with the first ma, so ma, discuss the, uh, the, uh, the, the controversy, is, do we call it the controversy, sir, about whether it was held in, in, in Batuan or in Limasawa. Let's see the... Well, that's something to look forward to in, in March. Thank you for your question. Um, I think we will stop there for our trivias. We will continue with our trivia offline. So please, for those who uh, still want to be uh, to have the chance to get the prize, um, you know, uh, stay tuned for our trivias, which will be posted. We will also be posting for our winners because sometimes you you really answer so fast that we really have to determine even that up to the time, up to the seconds that you, uh, you know, answered or give, gave the questions online. Before we, we end, we'd like to thank, of course, Dr. Jose Eliazar Arbor Salas for taking the time again for always accepting our invitation. Dagan ka yung salamat, sir. The, the, actually, the circle is complete. The tour is complete. Uh, Magellan's expedition is complete. First, Sir Jobers gave actually the first uh, part of tracing the Magellanic expedition from Spain uh, up to the Philippines. And then it's now good. from to Cebu even, and from now from Cebu up to the Malocas, and even he even stretches a little bit up to the time that Victoria and then eventually Trinidad also reached back Spain. So, Sir Jobers actually- the survivors. Oh, just the, with the survivors, the survivors, just the survivors of Trinidad. Um, so now the, the tour is complete in a sense, that is the expedition is complete, and we'd like to thank Sir Jobers for doing that. The ganka ayung salamat, Sir Jobers. Of course, we'd like to give, show this uh, e-certificate. Before we go, Heidi, I will see you tomorrow also. Oh, yes, the there's, a, <laughs> there's another center. talk. Yes, um, the talk of, from the Cebuano Study Center. I think, sir, it has something to do with um, the archives, but the sir? Spanish the records archives. of uh, Cebu in the Spanish archives, uh, Agustinian archives. There, I will detail them. See, so uh, we hope to see you again tomorrow for uh, But this one, this one, this another, this is another venue. This is a Cebuano Study Center. is also a partner of uh, Rafi and all the cultural institutions here in in Cebu. Um, before we go, we show again the the certificate, please. Certificate of Thank appreciation you. is given to Dr. Jose Eliasar Arbor Sales for sharing his expertise as a research speaker in today's webinar, Tracing the Magellanic Expedition Part Two. Given this twenty six of February 2021 here at uh, Edward Rafi, Eduardo Aboiti Street, Cebu City. Sign, Ms. Amaya Aboiti's Fansler, Rafi President and CEO. Dagan ka ayong sir, salamat, Sir Joe Burgess. And then, di wa pata na human, sir, kay mag ang GSK uh, online activities at padayon pa for the rest of the year. So, even if mahuman na itong celebration ta 2021, nagpadayon pag yahapon ta. Hopefully, makuha yahapon ka na mo as speaker, sir, for another topic. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Um, Thank you, Daniel. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you.
Thank Bye, you. sir. Uh, we'd just like to announce that the, our trivia th uh, third trivia winner is Mr. Russell Colminas. Congratulations. And uh, before we go, um, I'd like to thank everyone who, in one way or another, actually uh, made this webinar successful. I'd like to thank first uh, the Rafi Kabilin, the Kabilin Center for hosting the GSK online activity for this February. Also, thanks goes to the 2021 GSK Partner Museums and Sites. Also to the organizing committee of the Gabi Isa Kabilin, Arlene, Rave, Mar Martel, Renren, Sig, Melka, and Mac. That's the team. Thank you for ensuring that uh, this uh, webinar goes really online. And we'd also like to acknowledge the help of Mr. Uh, Cedric de la Cruz of AEV, who's our backup, and the Rafi IT team, who's also ensuring that uh, uh, our internet is stable. Thank God. And for our marketing and promotions uh, team, headed by our CHU CRM Fay, and of course Rafi BDG, including the uh, stake management uh, stakeholders management team. We'd like to remind, remind everyone that for those who want to get an e-certificate for participating in this event, please make sure you filled out the registration form and, our, uh, and also the evaluation form that will be posted after this webinar. Again, we'd also like to invite you to, of course, the Gabi Isa Kabilin one night only. Tickets are selling at 80 pesos online. We're selling it online. We just started the selling. I hope you will join us for this unique and special event on April 16, where our partner museums, 16 partner museums and sites will showcase presentations that are aligned to, of course, the celebration, the big celebration this year, the 500 years of the arrival of Magellan, Christianity, and uh, the victory at the Battle of Mactan. So please, we hope to see you. Join us, please, on the JSK Ono uh, celebration. And we'd like to also remind you that uh, on March, uh, 26 is our uh, next GSK webinar. And I, like I said, this is about the first mass. And there, there are updates. Our speaker is none other than Dr. Orlando Burinaga, who submitted a new discovery to the National Historical Commission of the Philippines, which was accepted actually in the latest panel uh, report and uh, finding and report. And so we hope you can join us uh, in the next webinar. Once again, Daghan kaayong salamat sa tanang ni Apil o ni Tambong sa atong ikaduha nga gabi sa Kabilin online activities for this year, for this February. We hope to see you again uh, in March and of course in the GSK Ono on uh, April 16. I hope you enjoyed our, our activity this afternoon. Enjoy the rest of the day. Daghang salamat and take care. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for sharing your valuable time and for participating in our webinar today. We hope to see you again next month for another Gabi sa Kabilin online activity to appreciate and experience Cebu's culture and heritage. Don't forget to like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Again, Taghang Salamat.